everyone. Millions of young Canadians watch the Olympics and dream about competing for Team Canada one day. But how do you make that dream a reality? RBC Training Ground gives young athletes the chance to find out. Well, this spring, they are inviting youths age 14 to 25, I'm talking to you, to attend a free in-person qualifying event in one of 14 cities right across this country for the ultimate chance to compete for funding and a spot on Team Canada. Here to tell us more is Olympic bobsledder and RBC Olympian, Cynthia Appia. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is very exciting. So I want to dive into this because... Um, it, break it down the basics for us for the RBC training ground. How does it work? Uh, and you being in this, what do you love so much about it? So RBC Training Ground is a program that was created to find and fund future Olympians. It's a way to showcase uh, to young athletes across Canada Olympic uh, sports that they may not realize could be perfect for them and then it funds them for it. Uh, what they'll find is when they go to these qualifiers is just a low stress environment where they are tested through a series of test events. And if they are geared to one towards one event or another, they're funded for it and hopefully get a spot on Team Canada. Wow. So you just gave us a little taste of, you know, what to expect if you're a young athlete going to the qualifiers. Um, but, you know, is it, does it feel like a camp environment? You know, what kind of relationships are made uh, at the, at, at, at the camp, uh, the, well, at the qualifiers? Let us know. <laughs> so... First off, it's a low stress environment. It's super high energy, yeah. but we want athletes to come in and feel like it's an inviting space. Okay. So not basic uh, training at military camp at all. <laughs> okay. I've been to a few myself. It's a lot of fun. You meet so many great athletes, all aspiring towards the same goal, but we just want athletes to come in to test themselves, push themselves beyond that limit. You won't be ranked, you won't be graded mm -hmm. on a score, but we just want to see what you can do and try and target you towards the best sport out there. I love watching this footage. So this sounds like a really great way for a potential young athlete to be discovered, which makes me wonder, how were you discovered, Cynthia? Mm -hmm. um, and who and how did you get tapped for your like actual Olympic potential? So my story is very interesting. I started off in track and field, but I just happened to walk on to both track and field and bobsleigh, which is the sport I'm in. Um, I competed at York University for five years, and I got to a point where I realized that the Olympics were not in the cards for me. But I, you know, happened to get an email from the strength and conditioning coach at the time. They said that the Ontario bobsleigh team was going to be hosting a dry land test camp at York. And I just decided on a whim to try it out. And here I am all those years later. Wow. wow. We hear a lot about that track and field to bobsleigh transition. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. 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 And I mean, listen, we watched this during the Olympics. <laughs> Mel and I are both avid Olympics watchers. I... I mean, I've always wanted to try bobsleigh. It looks amazing, but also terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so how'd you know you'd be any good at it? I knew I had the power from being a thrower. So my events were shot put and hammer, and that requires a lot of explosive power. And to get the sled uh, started as a brake woman mm -hmm. or brakeman, you need to have that engine, as mm. we say, that power, that push. And so I knew that that was going to help transition me over into bobsleigh. I just was missing that sprinting component, that fast speed, and that takes time to coach. But right off the bat, I knew I, I had found my niche that I never, didn't necessarily find in throwing. So something clicked. Something did yeah. click. Yeah. And that's what I love about bobsleigh. I love that. Well, your story, you know, it's, it's there are some other uh, RBC training ground athletes that go in in one sport, but then make a transition into another sport as well. Did you ever think that making that transition into bobsleigh could potentially lead you to the Olympics? <laughs> Funny enough, yes and no. So I knew as a thrower that, like I said, the Olympics were kind of out of the cards, but that switch, when that happened, I was like, what What? What if I do go for the Olympics? You know, why not? And and something something clicked. And for me, that was watching the Vancouver 2010 Olympic mm. Games um, and just seeing, you know, how cool it was to have a home games. And I was like, okay, you know what? This might be my calling card here. Neat. Well, I want to sort of unpack that some more because specifically watching the 2010 Games in Vancouver, it was Shelly Ann Brown who really inspired you. We talk a lot on our show about representation. If you can see it, you can be it. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you, you know, describe to us that see it and be it moment in terms of what impact it had on you and where you are today? Oh, definitely. I mean, I feel like like most Canadians, their reference point 
for bobsleigh is Cool Runnings, and I'm no different. Um, <laughs> but watching those Vancouver 2010 games and seeing Shelly Ann Brown win a silver medal, it kind of opened the door for me um, about the realm of possibilities that were now going to be afforded to me. And like representation matters is such a huge, um, you know, mantra that I hold on to. If you don't see it, you really don't believe it, and until you do, you realize there is no ceiling at that point. And seeing her compete, I was like. Okay, the opportunities are endless. Why can't I try mm -hmm. for Bobsley? She's done it, so can I. Now, you made your official Olympic debut in Beijing just a few months ago in February um, as a pilot for the Monobob and the two woman events. But you know what the reality is, is that winter sports, um, in winter sports, there are like disproportionately fewer, like fewer BIPOC athletes than in the summer game. So how can we attract more BIPOC athletes to those winter sports? So right off the bat, you can see that the differences between a winter sport and a, and a summer sport is winter sports tend to be more niche. They tend to be like centralized in a certain location. Um, you can use sports like basketball or track and field. Basketball, you really need just a ball and a hoop. Mm -hmm. um, track, you just need running shoes. Um, unfortunately, in a sport like bobsleigh, the costs are significantly higher and the access point is also yeah. more than likely away from you. I am from Toronto. Our, close, uh, our closest bobsleigh track is out in Calgary. So access to barrier or that those uh, barriers to entry, if we can break those down and then close that financial gap, you're gonna find a lot more BIPOC athletes coming into the sport. And I think that's where RBC Training Ground really helps to kind of mesh those two issues together, mm -hmm. at least partly. And by, by providing that funding that kind of becomes a barrier for a lot of people to enter into sport, especially winter sport. Uh, well, thank you so much for shining a light on that part of sport. We, we need to talk about it definitely a lot more. And a big thank you also to RBC for working to move that needle um, when it comes to committing money. Because money, as you said, is one of those barriers. And RBC is committing more than $13 million to support the next generation of athletes through RBC Training Ground and the Canadian Olympic Foundation. You know, somebody, a young person might be watching you right now. This might be their Shelly Ann Brown moment. And <laughs> if you've got their ear, what would you give in terms of advice to them? If they're like, could this be me? Could I go, should I go to check this out? My advice to young athletes across Canada is go for it. The time is now, this is your opportunity. If you're on the fence, the worst thing that could happen is to have regrets. And that's how I kind of live my life. Never be settled with regret. I'd rather know than not know. So go to these events, go to these qualifiers. You'll have fun, you'll meet great people and you'll see what the possibilities are. You might find yourself in a sport that you had no idea <laughs> was for you. And you might go to the Olympic games. Case in point. Uh, <laughs> Cynthia, thank you so much for sharing your story. We really, really appreciate it. And thank best you. of luck with everything in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. We want to tell you if you want more information on RBC Training Ground, including how to register for their qualifying events, like the ones happening this very weekend in Toronto and in Calgary, be sure to follow us on social media. That's at the social CTV. And hot tip, if you go to the Toronto qualifier, you might even catch a glimpse, maybe catch a selfie with one Cynthia, if she lets you, of course. Uh, she'll be there as well, so go check it out. Thank you again, Cynthia. Thank you.